Today's guest is Dr. Robert Bray. He has worked in the field of traumatic stress recovery for over 40 years. He started as a volunteer on a crisis hotline and throughout his professional career, he has always focused on the impact of traumatic stress on the mental and physical health of individuals, families, and communities. He has extensive experience as a clinician, helping in recovery from natural disasters, criminal acts, and domestic violence of all types. He has been training, writing, and developing thought field therapy since 1996. His book, Heal Traumatic Stress Now, Complete Recovery with Thought Field Therapy, No No Open Wounds, provides a consumer-friendly self-help guide to anyone struggling with overwhelming stress. Um, We're going to get into thought field therapy, what that is. Um, So it is essentially the the og of tapping right the original the original tapping that he learned from the guy who started it all he's going to start off the episode telling you guys about that and i'm saying that because i'm giving you some heads up he's going to take you through the process and you're going to see like i want you guys to know i'm like i'm not do it yourself i really encourage you to do it yourself because i'm not like trying to make it sound good when i'm sharing what i'm experiencing i'm actually very quite blown away by the simplicity of this process and the dramatic difference I felt about a situation like two minutes later. So super, super cool. Try it yourself. And I'm giving you that heads up because if you want to watch on YouTube, then you can, you know, he's going to say like tap under your eye, tap on your finger, you know, uh, but it's sometimes it's like under your collarbone. It's like where, you know what I'm saying? So if you really want to try it, just watch on the YouTube version when maybe when you get a chance, if you're listening to your car right now or something, but giving you a heads up that there is some visual stuff on here. Um, super, super cool. What a wonderful man. Um, his website is rlbray, B-R-A-Y.com. Um, he does mention that he has a workshop coming up in October, um, in San Diego. So we'll link that up in the show notes and his book and, uh, website and all of that. So let's go ahead and get into it. Here's Dr. Robert Bray. Okay. So Dr. Bray, you've been working in the field of traumatic stress recovery for over 40 years. So this is definitely uh, something, an area in which you've seen a lot. You've had a lot of wisdoms come up and Mm -hmm. you've, you know, developed this uh, thought field therapy since 1996. So over 30 years now have been doing this. And so I just thought we could kick it off really simply. What is thought field therapy? And I'm also curious why you call it that. Thought field therapy is not uh, my discovery. It was the discovery of a psychologist mm. named Roger Callahan. Okay. Brilliant man, brilliant man, mm. who in the late 70s, early 80s, started looking at, is there a better way to help people than just talking? Um, and mm. um, uh, started, um, he was brilliant in that he uh, recognize there are better ways to know what's going on than just in the words. So Dr. Callahan had been doing this for uh, 10 or 15 years and had finally developed it to a really um, knowable and learnable kind of techniques. I took the first course in 1996. Now, I'd been working traumatic stress for a long time before that. I was trained in EMDR uh, cognitive behavioral techniques, um, gestalt. Um, I mean, the thing is, is that when you start, when you've been doing something for this long, you get exposed to a lot of things. Um, and in 96, I learned how to do thought field therapy, which is the original, um, meridian treatment, uh, stimulation. Okay techniques that were done. And I'm probably boring the hell out of you and your audience. So (laughs) <laughs> tapping, talk. right? Like, so it's a tap, essentially, right? Yeah, so. basically what it is, is you stimulate meridian points by tapping on them with your own fingertips in a specific sequence to alleviate overwhelming emotional distress. And there are, uh, Dr. Callahan's work has involved, evolved into different forms. The most common tapping you see is something called um, EFT or emotional freedom technique. Mm-hmm. And that was developed by a student of Dr. Callahan's okay. um, in the late 90s. And uh, so anyway, I, I I found that it's the best way to help people uh, back in uh, 96 when I did this. Now, there was no research, but just my experience of talking to people and working with them made it very clear to me this was the best way to go. We have research today. There's over 250 uh, peer-reviewed journal articles and studies um, 
that I can give you a link to where you can get the whole big bag if you want it. But it's the most studied uh, treatment of traumatic stress there is today, and it's the most effective. So that's what I use. Um, hmm. are, are you? Have you done any tapping? Do you? Mm -hmm. have, okay. What, and have you done the EFT tapping? Have you been set free fast? Um, TFT. So I. You, you, I tried that app, the tapping solution for a while as part of my morning routine. Okay. We had a guest on the podcast who did emotional freedom technique with us. Okay. Um, I also, in preparation for this, did one of your videos on uh -huh. YouTube where you show a quick demo of it, which was right. perfect timing because I just had a crazy stressful event. Like I'm talking, I booked like an emergency session with my, you know, kind of mindset coach, right, right. conscious mind, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I was like perfect timing. Cause I had a huge, very triggering event yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I guess that will be a good segue because I, you know, while doing the tapping solution app and, you know, doing some other stuff, it's definitely all been awesome. It's opened me up. I've, I've had times where I'm crying. I have these little realizations that come in and cool stuff like that, uh -huh. but the timing specifically of just trying your short, you know, two and a half, three minute video on YouTube where you just jump right into it. I think, yeah. you know, it was from like 15 years ago or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, it you, hasn't changed much since right, I made I was, that video. I was that like, he's been doing this a minute. demonstration video. Right. And yeah. um, it was really cool because I, what I experienced, you ask, you know, what's your level of stress when you think about this event? And I was like, at, at least a good seven or eight, you know, and I could feel it in my body. Yeah. And at the end of your quick uh, process, mm -hmm. I was, I, you know, I'm always like, uh, be open, but also, eh, we'll see, you know, oh, yeah. and yeah. at the end of it, I felt specifically what I felt. I did feel a significant drop when it, you asked to, to think about the event again. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, for me, what it felt like was like that, what happened felt further away from me. Like right. I felt more in my body, safe safe yes. in my body. Yes. And that felt like not a threat anymore. Is right. that part of, is that typical? Yeah, that's, that's very typical. And that's what we want to happen is to um, bring down that um, uh, over uh, stimulation of a particular event when you're thinking about it, because usually what happens is, is that um, when you tap, you come fully into the present moment. Mm -hmm. And when you tapped, you came present into the fully mo into that moment and you recognized that that was something in the past that was something that was not here and now and as soon as your body was able to recognize that then you can engage the rest of yourself in problem solving or figuring out what you're going right. to do next so that's not an unusual experience and it's often the way people describe it so I, I'm glad to hear you had a good experience with it. Did you try um, any of the other tapping um, before you did the TFT I, on this particular event? I didn't. Oh, no. well, okay. Well, you, you know, the, the, you may have gotten a good result using one of those other techniques, but but the, the idea here is that um, we want to be able to downregulate the overactivity that happens in the para... Um, uh, I can go into the science stuff of yeah, this yeah. and talk Please. about it in, in neurological terms. Yeah, we I, love stuff like that on this oh, show. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, what you're doing is you're downregulating the overactive uh, sympathetic response, right? Um, and what you want to do, that's the fight or flight. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if that's too high, you really can't think. Now, right. on the other side of that, the parasympathetic response is the relaxation one. But if that's overactivated, then it's the faint or freeze kind of response. Mm -hmm. Fight or flight on one side or um, freeze and faint on the other side. And uh, what we want to do is to get your system to not be reacting in one of those extreme ways. Mm -hmm. And um, it's important that you do that because if you... I talk about the brain being in two parts, the top of the brain and the bottom of the brain. And that's a that's a little simplistic, but it, it goes right to the point, which is the top of your brain is where we think. It's uh, where we're able to formulate uh, perceptions of the world to kind of come to a theoretical understanding of what that world is. We can then apply things like um, logic and reason, and we can do analysis of those thoughts. Um, 
And we that's where we want to be because that's where we make our best planning and decision making and choose mm -hmm. that. The bottom part of the brain is the part of the brain that keeps us alive. So it would be um, the parts that we we don't we don't have cognition in that part of our brain. See, the top of our brain is where the words are, but down below, nah, it's just all experience. Mm -hmm. And so what you're doing is you're dealing with that experience part. And so uh, mm -hmm. it's what you've learned at an early age, at a, um, at a specifically stressful place. It's mm -hmm. the stuff that keeps us alive. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what happens is if we get triggered into a response where we're just acting from that bottom of our brain, from that I'm going to survive place, mm -hmm. we can't engage in those that thinking. Now, the thing about the top of the brain, that's where cognitive therapy makes a lot of sense. Let's talk about it. What do these words mean to you? What's your definition? How do you think about it? How's it going to affect you? And that's great. The problem is the bottom of the brain does not have that language center. Mm -hmm. The bottom of the brain does not speak in words um, and you can't communicate with it in words, but the bottom of the brain does communicate through experience. And so what we're doing is we're communicating with the bottom of the brain saying, it's okay, you're safe now. Just mm -hmm. come back into homeostasis, come back into balance. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, things shift. I'm babbling on here. Does this make no, sense? I'm, I'm loving every second. And then the, okay. our, our episode that's going to release the week before yours is uh -huh. uh, Dr. Robert Melillo, but you know, I just interviewed him like 30 minutes ago uh -huh. <laughs> and he is saying the same thing. He just went through a very similar process, Whether he's more on his topic is more on the right and left hemispheres and all of yeah. that. But he just did that whole bottom of the brain, top of the brain. So it's right. just like the perfect segue. I'm like, wow, this is like amazing, oh, good. Good. especially with me just having a stressful event. And, it, you know, it involved some friends mm. and it was, it was a thing, you know, yeah. legal stuff, all this, you know, kind of scary incident that happened and to one of my friends, you know, well, um, yeah. And so it's, I'm just resonating with all of it. You can bow. Are you okay? It. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. I wasn't, it was just, you know, when it affects somebody in your life, you know? So yeah. You mean you're an empathetic critter? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, and, and, and the problem is, is the one that happens to people that we love, that we care about mm -hmm. that, that connection that we have with them uh, feels very much like it's happening to us. Vicar it's what's called vicarious traumatization. And it's just as real as though it was happening to you through that connection. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that those kinds of vicarious events do is they often trigger old stuff in ourselves. It's yeah. going to be, oh, like, oh, I remember what, and then it's like, you're not right. remembering, you're right. having a flashback of when that happened. Right. Yeah. And uh, so that becomes a very difficult situation. And that's, uh, why tapping can be very helpful because it can immediately help manage those triggers um, so that you come back into the here and now. So um, at some point, I'd love to do a little tapping with you so you yeah. can experience what it's like. And I can show you the different ways that we do it. Um, because when you're doing EFT, there's one tapping pattern for everything. Okay. Okay. I, the tapping solution has been a wonderful thing and helps so many people. They've reached so many people. EFT uh, has helped so many people. Mm -hmm. uh, the difficulty is, is that neither of those techniques tell you what to do when it's not working or what to do when it's not working fast enough um, mm -hmm. or effectively enough. Mm -hmm. And the thing about TFT, which is the original tapping uh, solution, is that we use kinesiology muscle testing to communicate um, with the other's um, body, with the bottom of their brain. And we mm -hmm. take words out of it. Um, EFT, they always give you words to do. Right. Um, right. We don't use words. We just ask you to focus on the what's going on inside. You don't need to put a label on it. If, you, if you're aware of it, you're experiencing it, we can change that experience. And that's what the tapping does. It really speaks to me because... Um... And kind of my deepest uh, spiritual, if you will, like spaces inside myself, there usually aren't word, maybe a few might pop up, but it's usually like a, like an energetic shift or an energetic understanding. And yeah. sometimes yeah. I feel like words can 
take me off track. They can either like take me back into a similar pattern. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I yeah. often don't like to talk about something too soon because I feel like I'm just right. like, you know, just let me create the neural pathway of this. Right, 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 right. Let now, me experience you know? this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let me you feel, feel exactly. Yeah. So I, I really appreciate that. And I'm curious more about what, what, so the applying kinesiology to it, can you describe a little bit more what you mean by that? Okay, so there was a guy named Goodhart who was a chiropractor, mm -hmm. and he started uh, using this technique called uh, applied kinesiology, where he would ask people to hold an arm out and then he'd push on the arm and mm -hmm. he'd see whether it was strong or weak or push on a leg. Actually, you can do it with any muscle. Um, but so he learned how to do this. And then um, there was a, a, a psychiatrist named John Diamond who uh, started saying, well, when we think about or are in certain conditions, we're stronger or weaker. Um, and um, Dr. Callahan was a contemporary of these guys. Um, and uh, he went and took uh, Goodhart's course. It was a hundred hour uh, kinesiology course. He was one of the few non-chiropractors who ever took his course. Um, and then Roger began to incorporate that into emotional states and conditions and found that you could communicate with people around that using the muscle testing. And then um, from that, he began to realize that there were ways using uh, meridian treatment points to stimulate the body in a way that you could affect a different sense of it and different muscle testing. So the beauty in TFT is there's a muscle test for everything we do. There's a muscle mm. test to see if it worked. And there's wow. a muscle test to see if we need to do something else. So wow. you can be that precise. Now, mm. most people don't need that. I mean, you were getting some decent results, it sounds like, from EFT um, mm. and from the tapping solution. But what I want to do is make sure people know that there is a, uh, a greater depth to this and mm. that if you are a professional who's saying that you're doing this work, especially in mental health, um, you know what? You need to be prepared to go a different way because... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, people who are hospitalized are often not going to just respond to the standard thing because yeah. of the complexity of the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, my experience of, you know, the tapping solution in EFT is more like um, almost like mindset or personal growth or, you know, yeah. things like that. Like you've yeah. worked with, you know, natural disasters, oh, yeah. people who are victims of criminal acts, domestic right. violence, you know, um, violence, incest, those kinds of things. Right. Which, so you're yeah. really working in the, the PTSD traumatic, you know, traumatic right. Right. field more or trauma. Well, and I, and I also, um, uh, over the years, I've come to understand how you apply it in many different ways. I mean, one of the things that I'm focusing on now is how do you uh, apply it to increase your positive responses to things, mm -hmm. as opposed to just getting rid of the negative ones. I like that. And so, again, tapping can be very helpful in that sense. Um, mm. And uh, it's all learnable. It's all knowable. I've you know, I teach this stuff to children. I've mm -hmm. taught this to people in, uh, you know, standing in a in front of 120 people whose primary language is not English. Um, and uh, nice. to a translator being able to do that. Um, nice. And it's very effective. So I, I love, you know, this is, this is the stuff I love doing. I want to carry forward what Dr. Callahan shared with me. I worked with him from 96 until his death in 2013. And I was the primary trainer when he wasn't able to go out or his wife wasn't able to go out and train. They would send me to do stuff. And mm -hmm. so I have a really good sense of how he developed this stuff, how we worked with it, and have been able to even find uh, to be quicker, to be more powerful in what I'm doing with people. Um, I'm curious. Uh, yeah. Okay. So like, okay, let's say you have like really intense PTSD. Okay. Right. Like maybe you're a veteran or something, you know, it's, it's right, pretty right, bad. Right, right. Um, you know, uh, obviously like what I am thinking right now is that using TFT is helpful for like when you're in those acute uh, you know i don't know if anyone listening it's like when you're like trapped in that right. fight or flight right. and you're just like it's in your right. body it's not like right. you're just like i don't know how to get out of this i could see right. it being helpful there right in I'm a curious... flashback experience i'm sorry go ahead oh, oh go ahead I, I, well i was just gonna say i'm curious if like 
done consistently as like a proactive type of daily routine type thing, what you've had, have you had people do that? And what kind of results have you seen from that with people with like severe PTSD, for example? Well, if you have severe PTSD, this is, this is the technique you learn that I teach people the first thing, because you need to be able to downregulate this overactivity, this flashback experience, this reliving experience, Mm -hmm. because as long as you're in that state and your level of upset is high, you're not going to be able to engage the top of the brain. You know, there's no reasoning here. And whenever there's an argument between the bottom of the brain, the heart and the top of the head, the rat, the logical, the reasonable bottom of the brain, heart always wins. You can say that, well, I made that decision, but your body knows what it knows. Your brain has been keeping you alive for a long time and it knows um, what it knows. And how this is different than cognitive therapy. Cognitive therapy says you have an event, you give that event meaning, and then depending on the meaning, you have a reaction or a response. Mm -hmm. And I found that that's not true. Every experience you have, in the moment you have the experience, you have an emotional response. You don't think about it. It's just Mm -hmm. there before you even start Mm -hmm. to think about it. You go, Mm -hmm. and you know, you didn't think about whether I should be startled or whether I should be afraid. <laughs> right. It just happens. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the reasons that cognitive therapy is often not useful because we're trying to talk people out of what they know. Right. Um, and the more you do that, the less likely you are to succeed. Um, wow. I'm sorry, Tara. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> this happens uh, to me. Just for people who consistently practice, oh, you know, what yes, have you seen yes. in terms of trauma? Tra- anybody who's traumatized, which I guess is all of us at certain levels, um, right. for people who consistently practice, have you seen like that they get less frequent? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, so what'll happen is once you tap for a specific event, then you probably won't need to tap for that specific event in that aspect of it again. But let's say that, um, you know, you're uh, you're in an accident. So a, a story that I tell is a, I used to go to the uh, National Organizations for Victims Assistance uh, annual conference. And so every year I'd go and every year I'd ask for a volunteer in this uh, workshop, an hour and a half, two hours. And I'd always end up with a mother who had had a child who was murdered. And they would come forward and brave, brave women. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would say, so what's the problem? And they would say, I can't seem to get the image of my son's face um, when he was dying out of my mind. It's with me always. It keeps coming up all the time. Mm-hmm. So what mm-hmm. we did is we did a round of tapping. And the situation was, is that the, 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 the I hope this isn't too upsetting for your listeners. Um, I, it's okay. It's okay. We'll, it's, we'll, t- we'll tap in a moment. So, um, <laughs> uh, uh, her son had been shot, uh, in a drive-by just outside their house. He mm-hmm. stumbles into the house. Mm-hmm. He falls down. Um, she's holding him as he dies and she sees his, she's watching this happen. Mm-hmm. Now, now after that, she can't get that image For out sure. of her mind. And it pops up all the time everywhere. Sure. So we do a round of tapping. So we do that. And, uh, you know, after we do that, I say, so what are you noticing? And she said, well, now I'm just not seeing his eyes. I'm seeing his whole face, his whole body and the situation. It's that kind of distancing a little bit that right. you were talking about. So we did another round of tapping. Right. And I said, so what are you seeing now? And she says, well, I'm feeling more like I can see the whole room. I can see him. I can see the situation. I can hear what's going on outside with the cops and all of this stuff. And, you know, people coming. And I said, well, that's that's wonderful because clearly you're not as locked into that. And yes. And I said, um, so let's do another round of tapping. And she was lovely. She was strong. She said, okay, let's do this. I'm in front of a, 120 people, maybe 140 mm, wow, people. At this point. Wow. But she's willing to do it because she's seeing something change for her. So we do another um, round of tapping. And um, then I say, so what's happening now? She says, well, the feeling's changing for me. I'm being able to not be locked in on my son. 
and I'm feeling like this is, you know, something's going on here. And so we just do another round. And then I say, what are you noticing now? And she says, oh my God. She said, I'm now able to look around the room because I'm not locked in there. And there's my other son. Wow. Wow. It still gets me when wow. I think about it because um, she said it's the first time she realized that because wow. her other son had witnessed this whole thing. Wow. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, is this kid going to be screwed up? And then I said, shall we do some more tapping? And her response was, no, I, don't, I, th I think I'm good. I said, but what are you going to do? And she says, well, now I know what I need to do. I need to go home and sit down with my son and start to figure out how we help him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm. No, it's it's wonderful stuff mm -hmm. to see it happen. And that story stay, will stay with me forever. Um, but that's the idea that as you unlock that, you can begin to have a perception. Now, notice it wasn't one round of tapping and she was done. Mm -hmm. It was a process that there was this aspect and then there was another aspect and then there was a broader aspect. We had to tap through each one of those. So that sometimes happens. Sometimes we get we get lucky and one round of tapping takes care of all of it. Um, but that's the idea. So I'm just wondering, um, when I was telling that story, um, you look like you got it. Um, what are you feeling right now? Um. Well, I, I have someone close to me in my life that lost a son traumatically oh. a, 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 as a teenager. And I was, uh, -huh. uh, feeling the beauty of, uh, honestly, like getting possible solutions and things that could try because there is a lot of PTSD there. Um, he did, you know, visibly see his son that way, you know, so oh. it was a lot of, a lot of trauma. Um, and so should... mm -hmm. I'm sorry. So I was just, I guess I was just, I was feeling that for her and uh -huh. I was also feeling the beauty of mm -hmm. work like yours and so many others to be able to help people get out of those okay. trauma locked spaces that yeah. so many are dealing with. So are you feeling any discomfort with that at this moment? No, actually I'd say I'm feeling, let me, hold on. Let me, let me double check. Let me double check. No, I'd say I'm mostly feeling love and, and hope. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Uh, because if you weren't feeling good and you weren't in that space, because that's where we really need mm -hmm. to be to heal, where we really need to be on that journey of recovery, uh, to help ourselves and help others. So that's very good. Very good. Thank um, you for asking. Yeah. Um, Is there something? Yeah. Go ahead. Well, there's something I, I would love to demonstrate the tapping. Yeah. So let's your listeners going. can hear. Is there something that when you still think about it, you feel the upset? Yeah. Yeah. Got it? Yep. Zero to 10. How bad is that upset? Zero being no upset at all. 10 being the worst you can imagine. It's probably different than it was when it first happened, but what's the Seven. level right now? Seven. 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 Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite your listeners to also do this if they'd like. Um, notice what they're feeling. Rate it if they can. And then we're going to tap the side of your hand. Tap under your nose. Tap the beginning of the eyebrow. Tap under the eye. Tap under the arm. The woman we say, usually where your bra comes across. Um, and then under the collarbone. And then the index finger between the last knuckle and the bed of the nail, slightly towards the thumb, under the collarbone. Tiny finger under the collarbone. So that's the first part. And then we do something called the nine gamut series, um, which is the back of your hand between the two, the pinky finger and the ring finger, about a half an inch towards your wrist. You're tapping there through the whole thing. And what you're going to do is nine things. Close your eyes for a moment. Open your eyes. With your eyes, just look down into the left. With your eyes, look down at the right. Whirl your eyes in a big circle. And then whirl your eyes back the other way. 
Now hum a couple of bars any tune. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then count out loud. One, One two, two, three, four, five. And then hum again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we're going to go back, tap the side of your hand. Tap under your nose. Beginning of the eyebrow. Under the eye. Under the arm. Under the collarbone. Index finger. Under the collarbone. Tiny finger. Under the collarbone. And that's the, the crisis, uh, the standard crisis tapping pattern we use. It's the one that was on my demonstration video. So I would ask you now, go back, pull it up however you were focusing on it before. And then just rate. What do you notice? Compassion. Uh, I notice, again, I feel more separate from it. I, I literally feel like I'm physically further away okay. from it. Um, and I feel, it's almost like the incident feels smaller yeah. <laughs> and I yes. feel bigger. Um, yes. And um, I'd say... Yeah, again, it just, it feels more disconnected from right. me. And how is that level of upset? You, from zero to 10, you said you were at a seven, where are you now? Hmm. Yeah, like a two, to be honest, because <laughs> okay. I feel disconnected from it. It's so crazy. Yes, and because it's, it's what we've done is we've taken an event in the past hmm. and we've made it a memory. Yeah. It's not something that you're triggered into reliving in this moment. Yeah. It's now, we'll, you will always have feelings about what happened in that memory. But the beauty of a memory is it's like looking at a photograph. When you're right. done looking at it, you put it back on the shelf, right? And right. then you're done. It's not coming at you. It's not right. intruding when you don't want it. Yeah, that is fascinating. Yeah, yeah I don't even know if two is fair because like <laughs> I'm thinking about it and like, it doesn't, it just doesn't feel like it's about me. And it does feel more like a recall, like you're saying, than a like living vivid thing happening right, right now. Yeah. A hundred percent. I right. hope that you guys did that. And if you weren't watching on YouTube, you can watch on YouTube so you can actually see him showing me how, right. you know, but okay. Can, can, is, are you what? able to explain how touching these points, like what is that confusing the brain or like what, what is mm -hmm. happening there? Well, it's interesting that you see um, the fact that you're asking that question right now tells me something happened because if nothing <laughs> yeah. happened, you wouldn't be trying <laughs> to explain it to yourself. No. Yeah. I'm definitely not BSing anybody. No, right, 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 right. This. I mean, this is what I'm experiencing. Yeah. I was shocked when I tried it before I was like, yeah. huh? All right. Well, that's the thing is, is that, uh, most people's response to how do I make sense out of this? Oh, well, he distracted me. That's the most common thing that I hear. And That's I have funny. to point out that if it was a distract distraction technique, it was the worst in the world because I asked you to go back and think about it again. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't <laughs> distraction. Um, what, now, this is the part where you have to be willing to step into nobody knows anything about anything. You know, the truth <laughs> is, is, if you right. ask, why does some therapy work or not yeah. work? Yeah. We're not 100% sure. Totally. Even if you say, why does an aspirin work or not work? You can give some biological uh, explanations, but there's still so many unanswered questions. Totally. So, uh, but a theoretical perspective is, is that you are um, activating energy, chi energy in the body in a specific way that then informs um, the way that we formulate our experience. Hmm. And by doing that, we change that uh, experience in the moment. Hmm. And um, there, you know, that's part of the difficulty here is, is that, and why it takes, it took so long for people to start uh, paying attention to it and using it is because they said, well, that doesn't make any sense. And so they right. go away. Um, but uh, the more you use it, the more you'll come to get familiar with what's happening in your body, in your experience, in your mm -hmm. thinking about this. Mm. I don't have, you know, that's the, the standard answer is we have some 
theories about what's going on, um, but it's not like we can watch it happen in an MRI. Well, actually, right. <laughs> there have been uh, studies done where they put people in MRIs and they're watching their brain while they're tapping. Mm. And they can see changes happening in their brain as really? they're tapping. Yeah, because it's cool. it's um, it's lighting up different parts of the brain as yeah, you have a sure. different experience. Right. Um, I, I I know that's not real adequate, but is no, it- no. Well, it's the same. As, you know, it's like a kind of also if you think of like okay, if I'm painting something red, it's like how was that painting it red? You know, and get it right, over, right. You're like I don't know. It just it made it red. I'm yeah. good, and it's kind of yeah. like that. It's like it worked. I'm feeling different. So right. yay, and it's yeah. um obviously not going to cause harm or be you know it's not hard it's not expensive it's you know it's well and you know in the beginning when i first learned this from dr callahan there was you do a a bibliography you do a search right Mm -hmm. um and and you could find two articles about tapping and they were both like this is bullshit um (laughs) you know it has no theoretical basis or Uh um you know there's no evidence and what i came to understand early on was the only evidence that really matters is the evidence of your own experience. So I can tell you something yeah. was written. I can yeah. tell you something was done in a study. Right. But the one that really counts is what is your experience? 100%. And the evidence that you have from having done a couple of rounds of this is that this is useful and workful exactly. working for you. So please continue to do it and begin to gain more a, a larger body of knowledge about how that helps you and when it's the best use of it for you. Thank you. Yeah. I was thinking this is a great thing for maybe teachers with kids oh, yeah. who are dysregulated. I mean, yep. I know you've worked with first responders yep. and all yep. sorts of those, but I'm thinking what a useful tool. And I know you've gone around speaking and teaching actually, what are some, some of the most, you know, some of the applications of people that you've taught it to, who are then going to be teaching it to others. Well, I, I think that um, <clears throat> that what you find is is that um, most people who are exposed to life and death situations learn from that. And if you are exposed to those life and death situations as a child in an incestuous family or in a violent family, then you begin to perceive the world in a violent way and everything becomes a trigger for you. Mm-hmm. So part of what we have to do is after we calm things down enough is to provide a, an opportunity for you to relive the world, you uh, to rewire the world you live in. So you're perceiving things, not necessarily in life and death. Um, wow. I do inner child work a lot with people. And I say, you know, that five-year-old that responded the way you did, perfect. That was exactly what you needed to do. And it's great. Uh, that that child is not broken. That child is not needing fixing. That child was perfect. But what we have to do is be able to help that child to not take over into this adult body, into yeah. this adult situation that has nothing to do with that. Mm-hmm. And so you have to help them be able to realize there's a different filter they need to be using now. Mm-hmm. Um, this is part of the psychotherapy part of what I'm doing. Yeah. So you're Um, combining this with inner child work. That's amazing. Like you're going into childhood memories and doing this with it. That sounds profound. Yeah. That's great. You know, and, and it's, it it could be simple when you were saying it looked like it got smaller. It reminded me of a time I was working with a teacher who had been involved in a school shooting and Mm -hmm. he and his classroom were, they were locked down. Um, This is before lockdown and a lot of stuff. Um, But he said he could see the shooter. And uh, when I asked him to talk about the event, the shooter was like 15 feet tall, huge, with a huge gun, right. you know, right. and right. we did tapping. And as we did tapping, the, the guy got smaller and smaller yeah. and smaller until he was like, you know, just another kid. Um, and he could see him in that way. And then all that upset that was in him, he could let go of because he could understand it to see it to in the here and now in a very different way than the there and then when it was life and death stuff for him and his kids. Um, Yeah. Wow. 
So, it's cool to hear, uh, you know, I'm just tried this today, you know, yeah. and the things that I'm saying, you know, it's the same experience others have had. And oh, I, yeah. I definitely know in terms of at least some of the, you know, mindsets, healing work that I do with clients, like mm -hmm. when you can de-pedestal the, the bad guy, right? When yeah. there's no yeah. longer this yeah. big, scary yeah. threat, yeah. that's a huge, that's huge right. for healing because it's like, oh. Right. They're not and you see, and what I would, uh, what I would, the way I think about this is mm -hmm. that when you're using those cognitive techniques, those mindful techniques, when you're doing that, what you're doing is through your presence, through your holding of them, um, mm -hmm. in that energy and in that space, when they create that memory, it's a different experience because you weren't there when it happened. Mm -hmm. And so suddenly they're going, Oh, there's this very powerful, strong woman who is here with me. I'm having a different experience now. So you're operating at the experiential level. It's not the words that do it. It's the it's the sound of your voice. It's um, uh, you know, it's the stuff in polyvagal theory. They talk about these sort of inborn things, mm -hmm. and the sound and the rhythm and the tone of your voice is much more powerful than any word that you would use. You know. Totally. It's like somebody who's comforting a baby and saying all of this horrible stuff, but they're saying it in such <laughs> a way the baby's just going, oh, okay, you know? Totally. Because the, the, the words aren't nearly as powerful as totally. the experience that you're creating for them. So you're doing a wonderful job of creating a different experience of that event. And then, so when they go back to put that memory in place again, it's not the same memory. Yeah. Um, there's lots of research on what's called um, uh, memory reconsolidation um, through uh, coherence therapy that says that what you're trying to do is to activate the memory so you can recreate an experience that's just a uh, just juxtaposition of that. And then so when the memory reconsolidates, it goes into a different kind of way of responding than yeah. it did before. Yeah, that's been a lot of the work that I've done with uh, one of my mindset coaches, mentors is like, is is exactly what you described. Um, It's like going into a triggered moment and right. identifying a story that you created out of that right. and diving into that for a couple hours, recreate, you know, what if that story wasn't true? Now, how do you see right. yourself? Right. How now do you see them? How do you see, you know, and you're right. It, I experience that. It's like, I always feel like I got a little bit of a lobotomy after because I'm like, oh, like, I don't know how I... I'm just going to go for a walk and just let this all settle for a yes, second. Yes. Yes. And that's and then, all you need to do. Yeah. Right. Settle. Right. Just let it settle. And then it's funny because it's like, wow, I don't have those triggers anymore. I don't. Uh -huh. yeah. I and that's the piece. It. That's the, the thing that makes the difference in your life. Because mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. you're um, when you're not just reacting to the triggers, right. uh, to these intrusive memories, um, you come into a place where you have more control. Um, yeah. I've just been working on a survey that I'm doing about um, uh, how far have you come on your journey of traumatic stress recovery? Hmm. And there's like these eight items and I, um, they all are about not being overwhelmed by the emotion, not being overwhelmed by the trigger, nice. but being nice. able to come into a place of making decisions that mm. have meaning and passion and connection mm. in your life. Wow. That's huge. Right. Cause it's, it's never the goal to not feel emotions anymore. Oh, um, no, no, no. And, and the emotions yeah. change. I find when my stories about things are different, you know, or I'm having some sort of perceptual, like, for example, if no. I, um, you know, it have some story in my mind that my kids leaving their shoes in the doorway is them disrespecting me. Well, now I'm going right. to have anger and resentment or whatever. Right. If right. I have a story in my head that them leaving is because they're kids and they forget and that's natural and maybe we should get some better systems right, but, you, but it's not the story you're telling yourself it's the fact that you recognize the disrespect and what that does is that triggers into you all the times in your life that you have been disrespected <laughs> right not right. only by your children but by <laughs> your parents and your friends mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know and so you get triggered into this sense of i'm disrespected right Bullshit. you know right your, right, your right. respect you they love <laughs> right. you it has nothing you're... to do right but yeah uh -huh. but you're reacting to it as though and mm -hmm. so you tap that down and then you'll be able to say yeah they're just kids i need to be more effective in how i teach them how to right. show respect exactly you know?
Yeah. I love how quick this is. You know, I think that's probably mm-hmm. why you've done so much with first responders and mm-hmm. natural disasters. And, mm-hmm. you know, cause like when somebody is activated at that level, we need something quick and ideally not words too. Right. right. It's like, yeah. tell me about it. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so and all you have to do is just to get somebody to tap with you. When I'm dealing with uh, first responders, ambulance, police, that kind of stuff. Oftentimes, when they engage somebody who's just undergone that level of shock, they're not operating in the top of the brain at all. They're just very much into, I got to stay alive. Right. Um, and so try to get them to talk. It, it's not going to work. Right. That's why, you know, it's interesting when there's a police shooting. And um, I, I learned this a few years ago that when they interview the police about the shooting, they rate, they wait for two sleep cycles. And the reason they do that is because before those two sleep cycles, they are still so activated that you're not going to get your best recall. You're not going to get your best memory. Um, And so they want to bring it there. Now, my position is we'll tap and then ask (laughs) them because you bring it down and you can get the story. But we've known that for for a while. That when you're in the midst of that uh, trauma like that, um, you're upset. I mean, you can't, there's diagnosis, clinical diagnosis for mm-hmm. PTSD stuff. Mm-hmm. The, the one diagnosis, you can't do any diagnosis for at least three days because mm-hmm. we think it's a normal response. After three days, there are certain brief uh, descriptions you can use uh, of a disorder. But to get real PTSD, you got to be at least 30 days beyond the event. And I would say more like 90 days if you're going to diagnose it, because we have a natural uh, healing response that we do. Mm. So um, we've known a lot of this stuff for a long time. But now we know that by tapping on meridian treatment points in a specific order, we're able to uh, alleviate that overwhelm and bring them back into this moment, whether it's 10 minutes after the event happened or it's 10 years after it happened. Um, well, yeah, what a gift for not only trauma, but also just, you know, typical anxiety in right. life and just the stress response that we all have. What a great right. resource for that. Right. And our bodies, uh, you know, um, there's a great book. Oh, the book by John Diamond, I mentioned to him, is Your Body Doesn't Lie, which mm-hmm. is uh, brilliant because it talks about how if you're connecting with that, you're going to get information that's truthful, that's honest. Right. Um, he didn't use it in the same way that Dr. Callahan did, but it's very important. And the nice thing is, is that once you learn the kinesiology, you can work on something. Um, now, notice when I did this with you, I didn't ask you to explain the event. Right. I didn't need you to describe it at all. Right. I could see that as soon as you went into that thought field, you were experiencing something that was uh, not appropriate for the here and now. And right. so I took you through the crisis tapping pattern. Mm-hmm. Now, for some people, what I would do is I would say, just think about it. And I I wouldn't even ask them to rate it because I would just do uh, muscle testing. If they were in the office, I'd do muscle mm-hmm. testing on them. If they are at a distance, I will use myself as a surrogate and I will muscle test on myself. Wow. So if somebody wants to... Um, get to something and they really don't have a a, a good handle on it. Um, You can just do that. And you don't even have to have any, I've treated people. I don't know what the hell I'm treating. They know they present that they're, they need some help and, but they're not going to trust me enough to tell me what it's about, whether it's criminal or just Mm -hmm. too shameful or whatever. Mm -hmm. And by doing muscle tests. So the way I do it now is I just use my finger, right? So I'm muscle testing. So just say, I want to be healthy. If I that's okay. Healthy. I want to be healthy. Right. See, I get a strong response. And I know you don't, but say, I want to be sick. Oh, I don't know if I want to say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, all right. I want to be sick. Right. See, I'm, I don't get a response. That's not true. Right. And I know it's not true. You don't have to tell me that. <laughs> um, but if you say something like, um, uh, I want, uh, you know, Anything positive, you're going to get a, a strong response on. Now, the same thing is if I if we were 
uh, working on something together and you were saying there's something there, I can feel it, but I don't know what it is. What I would do is just ask you to feel it. I would muscle test it. And then I would find a specific pattern, not a general pattern, but a specific pattern to alleviate what it, whatever that is. Wow. Um, and uh, it's so powerful once you get to doing it at that level. Mm -hmm. um, and it allows you to, the workshop I do, I do a four day workshop where I taught, teach people everything Dr. Callahan taught me and a little more. I call it engaging fearlessly because mm -hmm. there is nothing that I won't take on um, with a client or in myself because I know that I will be able to follow my bodies, my inner wisdom, my inner knowing to a place of healing and coming back to a stronger way of being. So that's what I want people to do is to be able to engage fearlessly in their life and not be caught up about, oh, because this happened to me or that happened to somebody else. Mm -hmm. I can't go there. I can't think about that. Mm -hmm. And it, it's... Um, <laughs> I'm just thinking about a client I had today and I've been trying to teach her this for years and it just frustrates the hell out of me because I'm not able to get her to go to a place where she's fearless about the future. Mm -hmm. We can deal with things in the moment pretty well and we when stuff in the past pops up pretty, but it's like she is just not, She, I think it's because she had physical violence as a child her first marriage involved a lot of violence. Uh, I think she got hit in the head a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there may be other levels of things mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, it, it's just that I want people to be in that place where you get to choose what fits who you are, your passion, your inner um, sense of destiny, and to be able to operate in that way. Yeah. And it's definitely helpful when you're not living in the past or the future or triggered all the time and oh, yeah. feeling in oh, stress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's because once that fear comes up, man, you're not, yeah. making, you're not making your best decisions. Uh, mm. You know, I, um, you know, I love doing this stuff. Um, is there anything else you'd like to work on while we're here? Hmm. Let's see. Could you show an example of combining the muscle testing with? Oh, oh sure. We will, we'll, we'll do that. So for okay. you, think about, think about where you want to go. Think about what you want to do. Think about, um, I don't know, your kids, your partner, your whatever, but that you're holding yourself back mm -hmm. and you're probably holding yourself back because of some fear. You don't even know what it is. Okay, got it. You got it. Now can and now you don't have to, but can you feel anything with that? Yep, in my heart there's like compression in my chest. Okay. And do you have a 0 to 10 on it? Mm. It's tough to say. Maybe like a 6 or 7. Okay. 6. 6. It's your instrument, you decide. Yeah. Um so what I want you to do is just notice here. I'll do the muscle testing and you can see it on my finger. Okay. Um, do you do self-testing? Because you we could use your self-testing if you want. No, no, you do it. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. All right. So what I want you to do is just say this issue. This issue. Right. Finger doesn't move. Says there's something in the way when you say that that's out of place. Mm. Um, say, um, say, I want to be over this issue. I want to be over this issue. Okay. So that's strong, which means there's no psychological reversal. Then just say, we should do tapping. We should do tapping. Yes. Um, we should do chakra treatments. Sorry, can you repeat that? We should do chakra treatments. Shock retreatments? Chakra. Chakra. Seven chakras okay, sorry. in the body. I thought you said shock retreatments. I was like, whoa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm like, what's that? No, no, no. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Sorry. You're right. showing good health there in terms of. I, you I was like, this is we should super interesting. Treatment. Okay. We should do chakra treatments. We should do chakra treatments. Okay. No, I was just testing because that's another okay. interesting aspect of this, the way I didn't okay. even touch on. So what I'm going to do now is touch different treatment points on my body. And some points I will get a strong uh, response. Some places I get a weak response. Um, and um, 
that tells me where we need to tap. Now I'm just finding all the tapping points on my own body before we start. We could, I, I could, it's easy to show you how to do it. But what I'd like you to do is tap the beginning of the eyebrow. Tap under your eye. Tap on your middle finger. Mm -hmm. Tap on your thumb. Outside of eye. Uh, tap under your arm. Tap under your collarbone. Say this issue. This issue. See, now I get a strong. So let's go ahead and do the nine gamut series. Tapping the back of your hand. Close your eyes. Open your eyes. Look down left. Look down right. Whirl your eyes in a big circle. Back the other way around. Hum a couple of bars of any tune. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Count out loud. One, two, three, four, five. Hum again. <laughs> okay. Um, then uh, let's tap again, beginning of the eyebrow, under the eye, middle finger, <clears throat> um, thumb, <clears throat> excuse me, outside of eye, index finger. Underarm, under collarbone. Now, um, just stop. Bring the issue up again. This issue. Now it's strong. What do you notice? Uh, immediately, I felt this energy of like, it's solvable. <laughs> like that <laughs> kind of like, it's it felt less like daunting and you know it was just like oh kind of this like more like of course no sweat kind of energy with it right it's and cool. what is that level of subjective units of distress that one to ten scale what, mm. what do you feel now as you think about doing that thing mm. yeah maybe a two again like yeah it's a, one or two it's just not enough like, to stop you from moving right forward. it's like it's solvable like it's, yeah, yeah. Cool. See, that's that's uh, that's an application I think in coaching that is really yeah. useful because totally. while oftentimes people don't have a clear sense of what the block is, mm -hmm. they're not acting, you know. And you as a coach are sitting there going, "All you need to do is," you know? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a reasoned response. They're having a a, a body experience right. response that totally. says, "Not safe. Don't go." Right. Yeah, cool. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to kind of point people in your direction. So your website is rlbray, b r a y dot com, right. um, and we you have all sorts of information on here. Um, right. There's you you you're a speaker, obviously, on this right. stuff. Right. Do you have any trainings coming up? Okay, so um, I, I'm actually, I was invited to present at the Whistleblowers of America conference, nice. which uh, they're going to let me do a, a brief training. They're going to give me three hours okay. to be able to help these people who are, you know, really guardians of our well-being. Wow. Are struggling with how do you survive this whistleblowing process because it is horrible when you got to deal with governments or corporations mm -hmm. so i get to do that in september in october um uh i have a four-day training that i do that's called engaging fearlessly and that's where i teach people everything from here's a basic tapping pattern to here's how you use uh advanced kinesiology muscle testing to do the most advanced kind of work necessary that your body's leading us to it or tapping. And Beautiful. that's in San Diego. Um, okay. That's, you can see that on my website. Um, and I do that a couple of times a year. So I'll be doing that October 24th through the 27th. Um, okay. And you don't have to be a mental health professional. Unlike things like EMDR, tapping does not cause harm. Right. So, right. I teach it to everybody. I teach awesome. it to uh, coaches, to mental health folks, to nice. uh, mothers who want to help their kids, um, you know, 
So it's open mm-hmm. and it's uh, awesome. it, it's a wonderful experience. I don't know if this this uh, podcast will be out before then, but um, I think it will. You guys yeah. still have a little time. Yeah. So we'll yeah. link that up. If you want to give us a direct link, we can put that in show notes if you have okay. a direct link for it. And if you go on services on his website, guys, which again is rlbray.com, go to services, there's therapy, there's the TFT training. Right. Also, right. if you're interested in having Robert as a uh, speaker, let speaker me know. and yeah. crisis intervention consulting, that's all on there. So yeah, and I love teaching. You know, the beauty of this is, is that I'm 72. So I'm at a point in my life where I do what I want to do. <laughs> yeah. There's no reason for me to do things I don't want to do. And right. I love doing this. I love awesome. teaching people this stuff. I love, I still do 10 to 15 hour, clinical hours a week. Wow. Um, and, awesome. you know, uh, mm-hmm. it's such a gift that people give me when they let them, let me help them or yeah. when they let me um, teach them things that will change their lives mm-hmm. um, in the way that they want. So. It's so appreciated. You have such a, a good heart, good soul, good energy. And uh, thank you for thank you for coming on today. And thank you for sharing, showing me, you know, um, yeah. how unbelievably simple and effective that can be. So it's much appreciated. Um, appreciate your time. Right. Thank you. Thank you.